you. Thank you, Mohammed, for those uh, really kind words. And um, it's a great pleasure to be with you. I look forward to these next two days. I have to say, Mohammed is really raising the bar in terms of educational quality and attention to every detail. Uh, very impressive. So I've been tasked to address uh, EUS as a potential replacement for ERCP and what may lie ahead. And as I thought about this, <clears throat> my disclosures, I don't have any financial conflict of interest related to this presentation, but I am the proud parent of the Axios Lumina Posey Metal Stand and its delivery system, which was adopted by Boston Scientific. So as we think about what may lie ahead, well, this legendary thinker said, if you want to know the future, look at the past. A more contemporary legendary uh, thinker said, let's go back to the future. So let's uh, put the evolution of biliopancreatic endoscopy in some historical context. So it all started in 1968 with diagnostic ERCP, and then it evolved to therapeutic ERCP. And a bonanza of specialized ERCP accessories were developed in the 1980s and 1990s. And then over a decade after ERCP, EUS came onto the scene, and we had our first diagnostic EUS reports, and then I contributed to the advent of interventional EUS. There was less enthusiasm in terms of device development, so for the most part, it was FNA needles. But then in 1996, we see a convergence of ERCP and EUS to a new procedure called EGCP, EUS-guided phalangeal pancreatography. And this is the landmark paper that was published by Moritz Wiersema from the Mayo Clinic. And he coined this EGCP. And this was really revolutionary if you think back we're looking at a cholangiogram that rivals an ERCP cholangiogram, except we're using an FNA needle to inject contrast into the bile duct. And he was able to evaluate 11 patients with failed ERCPs, of whom three had normal anatomy and needed no further intervention, so didn't need to have any intervention, any ERCP afterwards or other. And the EGCP could be accessed transgastric or transduodenal for the bile duct, and then for the pancreatic duct, likewise transgastric or transduodenal. So now a few years later in the new millennium, we see the publication in series annually of ductal drainage, starting with the bile duct, then the pancreatic duct, and then the intrahepatic ducts. So let's go through these very quickly. These were truly landmark papers. And this first one from Mark Giovannini in 2001, colodoco enterostomy, a case report, patient with obstructive jaundice with failed ERCP, did a transduodenal puncture of the bile duct, and this time just taking what Moritz did one step further, passes a guide wire through the FNA needle, and then using the Seldinger technique, performs over-the-wire bougie dilation, and then exchange for a duodenoscope, and then places a 10 French plastic stent. And you see this nicely shown here in the figures. And he commented, that the main problem is the risk of leakage of bile into the peritoneum, the challenge. 2002, the same for the pancreas, four patients, BODRCP. Now the challenge here is getting through a fibrotic pancreas 
A seven French uh, stent was placed for drainage, but required the use of a diathermic sheath to enter into the pancreatic duct through a fibrotic pancreas. Commented in the discussion was special devices are needed, such as diathermic as a diathermic sheath, which provides the only means of entry into the pancreatic duct after passing through fibrotic pancreatic parenchyma. And then in 2003, drainage of the intrahepatic ducts was reported in four cases with no complications. So now we're able to access the bile duct both from below, the common bile duct, as well as the intrahepatic ducts. Now in 2004, the so-called rendezvous procedure was reported. And one wonders why it took actually so long for that description after the prior descriptions of cholangiopancreatography as well as drainage where a wire had to be placed in through the needle into the ducts. But this is the report in six patients with failed ERCP through 19 or 22 gauge needles the wire advanced across the ampulla or the anastomosis into the duodenum and then, as you're all familiar with now, conversion to a standard ERCP. So this is a hybrid procedure. And you'll note here, oh, what happened? Sorry, could you please go full screen? Thank you. Um, you'll note here, guided. So it's described as EUS guided. Now, I think nomenclature is very important that we all speak the same language. And I differentiate guided from assisted. So guided means that we're doing the entire procedure with the echoendoscope, with one scope. This replaces ERCP, so it's really competitive with ERCP. Assisted is where we're using EUS as, or the echoendoscope, as an adjunct to the duodenoscope to perform ERCP. So EUS and ERCP are complementary. So I think more appropriately, this should have been called EUS assisted rendezvous. Now in 2007, the first EUS guided gallbladder drainage was described and Todd is with us today. He reported this together with Mark Tapazian at the Mayo Clinic, a case report of failed transpapillary gallbladder drainage in a patient who had undergone SEMS placement and using the Seldinger technique, placed a seven French stent to drain the gallbladder transbulbar. And he commented, very insightful and I'd say foresightful, Future developments in this area should include devices to fix the gallbladder to the site of the puncture. And why did he say that? Because he recognized the challenge of EUS guided gallbladder drainage. And that is that we are perforating two non-adherent walls. This is very different from a pseudocyst, where the cyst is usually adherent. And so there is a significant risk of bile leak and air leak in fact, on EUS, you can see this bright echogenic layer between the gallbladder and the duodenum. That's fat tissue because these two structures are not adherent. And you can see here in this patient who went to surgery, the stent between these two lumens. And subsequent reports of gallbladder drainage using double pigtail stents reported a high complication rate related to leak both bile and air. And so that led to the LAMS error, stimulated at least me to start thinking about solutions to bile leak. So we have the LAMS and the transluminal uh, delivery system. I reported on this in 2011. And now this LAMS provides lumen apposition but really, I think more importantly, it provides a port for entry of the endoscope into the gallbladder. And you can imagine the excitement, my excitement, when I, for the first time, saw the inside 
of the gallbladder. So it was clear that we needed tools to prevent a leak. Firstly, a transluminal stent delivery system that would allow us to access the target lumen with a stent-loaded catheter. So the hole is essentially plugged the entire time. And it eliminates Seldinger. Very useful for our interventional radiology colleagues, not so helpful for us working a very long distance away from our target. And the lambs, of course, covered and self-expanding seals off the track that we've created afterwards. Blue and opposing, but again, the emphasis is on a port for transluminal intervention. We're extending the reach of the endoscopist to structures that we historically could not reach. So this LAMS port for endoscopic intervention is illustrated in our ability in the gallbladder to perform stone extraction, lithotripsy, both mechanical and EHL. These are images from my practice. Biopsying the interior of the gallbladder, and even polypectomy has been reported. And I'm sure we'll see reports of EMR, probably even ESD, in the gallbladder. So you see now, we have pan-biliary access and drainage capability. We can go extrahepatic, common bile duct, we can go intrahepatic and drain, and we can drain from the gallbladder. So we can drain the bile duct through the gallbladder. And so it begs the question, can EUS replace ERCP? We can access the entire biliary tract. We're going anterograde versus retrograde. We're using ultrasound versus fluoroscopy. And we're using an echoendoscope versus a duodenoscope. Well, we have two randomized controlled trials, both published in 2018. This first one from uh, Korea, showing that EUS was significantly superior to ERCP in all of these categories. So here you can see in patients of whom half underwent CDS, drainage from the common bile duct, and the other half from the intrahepatic ducts, and you can see that stent patency was significantly better in those patients who had undergone EUS-guided uh, drainage. And then we have this second paper from this institution with this author, Muhammad, demonstrating at a minimum equivalent outcomes in this randomized controlled trial. So this is a very robust study proving that the two approaches are at least equivalent. But the Achilles heel of EUS is that we do need duct dilation to access and drain. So if we ask the question, can EUS replace ERCP, I would say currently, yes, for surgically unfit patients, certainly for patients with strictures, with palliation being the goal. And those patients with a defiant ERCP, difficult or failed, or patients at high risk for ERCB with a history of pancreatitis. Maybe in the surgically uh, fit patients with strictures, but that's really going to depend on studies that answer the question, what is the impact of EUS-guided drainage on future surgery? Maybe stones unlikely leaks because usually the duct is decompressed. So that's where size matters. But as we think about what lies ahead, it really shouldn't be a question of can, it should be a question of should. Should EUS replace ERCP? There's no difficult cannulation, both the papilla as well as the stricture. We're coming from above. It's anterograde not retrograde. There's minimal, and in my practice, no ionizing radiation. I do my procedures in a non-fluoroscopy room. And we can now, using the LAMS as a port, we can drive our endoscope into targets outside of the GI tract for endoscopy-guided intervention. 
But most importantly, I think we've addressed the holy grail that we've been looking for these past decades since ERCP was first described in 1968, no post-ERCP pancreatitis. Thank you.